In this video, I'm going to help you navigate the settings on your camera so that you know how to use the Canon T5i for video. This video is also relevant to any model of the Canon Rebel that you have, whether it's T3i all the way to T7i. Hey guys, I'm Amanda Horvath and I'm all about helping business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. If you're looking to use video in your strategy this year, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. On this channel, I talk a lot about DSLR video tips and what settings you should look for. If you haven't already seen these videos, then I highly recommend looking at them and I have them linked in the description below. By the end of this video, you're gonna know how to find your ISO, shutter, aperture, white balance, color profiles, and audio inputs on your camera. First, you need to turn on the camera and be sure that you are in video mode in manual. If you are just on on and you have one of these random settings, it's going to show you different setting options within the menu. So you really wanna make sure that this is what you are set to. When you are set to that, you will halfway press down the shutter and it will pop up with your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO here and this is your meter so that you can see whether or not you were properly exposed. So if you halfway press down, the way that you're going to change your shutter speed is to halfway press down and you'll use this dial at the front of the camera to navigate up or down. Now, if you are shooting in 24 frames per second, which you should be, I'm going to show you how to set it at that, then you will set this to one over 50. In order to change the aperture, what you'll do is you'll click this AV button at the back and you'll use that same dial to go up or down with your aperture. Now, for whatever reason, this camera forces me to halfway press down the shutter in order to see these numbers. So when you let go, the numbers disappear. So you kind of have to be uh, navigate this pretty well with halfway holding down the shutter, holding down this button and changing the aperture. I guess that's just what you get with low end cameras. If you own this camera and you feel that there's another way to change this, then go ahead and drop a comment below. But this is what I have found to work best. Now for your ISO, the way that you change that is there's a button at the top here that says ISO. If we hold down that button, a new screen will pop up that has several different ISO options. Now, because it's a low end camera, there aren't a ton of different options. Jumping from 800 to 1600 is going to add a lot of grain to your shot. So I highly recommend with this camera, I would never shoot above 800 ISO. I would recommend getting lights and adding light to your image rather than cranking up this ISO. So if you click this quick menu here, it says Q, then you can navigate up and down these menus. If you want to go over, you'll notice that that does not go over here. So you need to go up and down to go between all these different settings. This AWB refers to your white balance. That refers to automatic white balance. I recommend that when you are shooting, choose if you are in daylight if you are in tungsten light, those are the two that I would use the most. If you're outside, this is going to set your color temperature to 5600 Kelvin, and this will set your temperature to 3200 Kelvin. Now, if it looks weird, then go ahead and shoot on automatic white balance, but be aware that that might change according to if the light is changing within your room. So. Overall, I would say you kind of want to stick to using daylight or tungsten. The next setting that you're going to want to change is your color profile. On this camera, it's actually called your picture style. So here's how you get to it. You can do this two ways. First, you can go to your quick menu and navigate right underneath with a white balance mark and you can just scroll back and forth to find the different profiles that you've already set. Now, in order to set these different profiles, the way that you would do that is you go to menu, 
and you go to the second camera icon all the way down to the bottom where it says picture style. Now for this, I highly recommend adjusting your contrast and saturation. So when you do that, you can kind of flip through these and see what they look like. But generally speaking, I think neutral is usually better. You'll want to bring down the contrast as much as possible and the saturation as much as possible. And the way that you do that is just by going back and forth here. In order to change your frame rate or the size dimensions that you're shooting in, you can get this as well in two different places. You can go onto the quick menu and navigate down until you get to this section here. There's the movie recording size and you can go between them. There's 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second, 24 frames per second, and then if you wanna shoot in 60 frames per second, which is slow motion, then you can only shoot in 720p. So your frame size will be smaller if you want to shoot in slow motion. The only other option is 30 frames per second at 640 and 480. I have no idea why they even give you that offer, so do not use it. <laughs> Go ahead and stick to 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second and you will be golden. If you have a mic that you'd like to plug directly into your camera, then the way that you're going to do that is to go to the side here where it says mic, and then you'll just plug that right in there. Then you'll navigate to your menu, and you'll go over to the video tab, the second video tab where it says sound recording, and you'll click on that, and you want to select manual, not auto. And then for your record level, you can see right now the record levels are moving, and you can adjust these to be lower so that my audio levels aren't coming in as much, or higher. But generally speaking, you'll want this number to be peaking at 12. So be in front of the mic when you're testing this audio. You might wanna flip this screen around. Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, and you can kind of navigate and pull this down. You could actually use the touch screen. I'm testing the audio and making sure that it's peaking at negative 12. Then, once it looks good, you just click set and you are good to go. Before you shoot on your camera, you're going to want to format your card each time that you shoot. This makes it a lot easier whenever you plug your SD card into your computer and can just drag and drop all the files. Also, you don't run into running out of space in the middle of filming because you forgot to format your card. So here is how you format your card. You go to menu and then you go to the first gear icon all the way down to format card. You click on that and you click OK. Just be sure that you've already dumped any footage that is already on this card so that you don't lose anything valuable. One bonus setting that I have for you specific to this camera is the auto power off that is it's set to. It's incredibly annoying. You'll be setting up your camera and after two minutes it just shuts down. It's meant to preserve batteries, which is good, but it can be annoying. So here is how you turn it off if you'd like to. You go to the menu and you're gonna go to the second gear icon to the auto power off option. It's usually set to two minutes you can go all the way down and you can disable or you could put it to 15 minutes. Just be sure that if you're not using your camera, remember to turn it off so that you don't lose your battery. What other questions do you have about the settings of your Canon T5i? Go ahead and drop a comment below and I'm happy to answer any of them. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.